Welcome back to part four of I Catch Killers with former underworld figure Graham Henry. It's very rare on I Catch Killers we go into part four. I reckon we could go into part eight with the stories that Graham, <laughs> Graham's got. But this is, you know, last man standing and uh, we're getting an inside uh, look at the uh, the world that uh, Graham was very much a part of. A lot of treachery, violence and uh I don't know. I'm I'm exhausted just listening to some of the stories yeah. we've had. We've talked about attempts on uh, Graham's life, paybacks by Graham, or attempts to uh, to pay back, and yeah. uh, so many other things that uh, have happened in the uh, in his time in the underworld. There's a couple of other things that we want to talk about. One uh, in particular was uh, well, let's put this one up front. Uh, first of all, when uh, you were shot by the police at North Sydney, yeah. Yeah, as I say, that was the 12th of June, uh, 1981, and uh, I was doing a drug deal. Yep. And uh, I was a little bit desperate at the time. I'd just done a nine-month stretch for a, for a gun, and I, paid the, I, I actually paid the police to beat the blue, and they lashed on me. Right. Right, I was a certain detective. It was pretty well known at the time. Um, but uh, a turncoat, you know. Yeah. So anyway, they lashed on the deal. Anyway, I only got and, nine. And can can I just yeah. say on that when we talk about that, like I sit here and and I'm accepting, and people go are probably looking at me, going, "Well, you're a cop. How how are you accepting?" Someone yeah. says that small group within the police. Yeah, small group. Yeah, and that's that's how how they operated. Yeah. And this was yeah. pre royal commission was days. It, and, well, it was a bit bigger than a small group, but <laughs> you know what I mean. But yeah. I mean, you know, I went pretty. I mean, mate, I went as high as the assistant commissioner of police. Yeah, know yeah. what I mean. So, well, uh, that's uh, how I went. Corrective services minister that's as well, right. and, and the uh, corrective services and magistrate, you know, everyone. Yeah, Madri- yeah, I mean, we used to have barbecues with these blokes. Yeah, yeah. you know, so you know, we keep them all sweet. And as I say, if we went to court one day, and one of my boys was up in the court, and I showed me head in front of a certain magistrate, then. Uh, you know, he would walk. It is. Like, no, what I mean. So yeah, and that, the, that's how we did things. Listeners, this is not a movie. This is a real no, world. It's a this real is, world. Yeah. So, um, okay. So you you did nine months for possession of a gun. Yeah. You're a bit. Uh, and when then I got out, and I was a little bit desperate for money. So, I well, uh, I got straight back into the saddle and just said, oh, well, I will. I I ran into a couple of people at uh, uh, Wallara, Wallara Hotel, and. Uh, when, when, when I run into them, actually in the pub that day was drug squad officers and uh, at another table with a, with this friend of mine with another person that I'd seen around the traps a bit. And um, anyway, I started to talk to them and just blah, 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 exchanging words and then got on to that sort of subject and I took the bloke for a walk and uh, patted him down, made sure he didn't have nothing on him. And uh, I said, what do you want? He said, I, I, he said I'm after a pound of hammer, meaning heroin. And I went, uh, yeah, I can probably fix you up with that, mate. I said, soon you're a friend of the other person there. Yeah. I said, uh, but, you know, said that's the way. I said, I'll, I'll work on it and I'll see what I can do for you, mate. So I knew straight away I could get it, so. I went and seen someone and uh, organised it all, and but I, in between it, I thought I had a little bit of a second thought about it, and I thought I'd just go and have a bit of a check on the bloke, you know. So I followed him around a little bit, and uh, I don't know whether he knew I was tagging him or, but he didn't go no nowhere in any police station or yeah. you know what I mean. He was drinking in pubs. He was you know. Just doing normal thing, and plus, he was seeing this woman that I knew, and uh, so I went. No, I don't. So I said I'll drop my guard here. But anyway, so I ended up doing organising a deal for him. I met him. I said I'll meet up with you. I said and we'll we'll fix it up this week. He said all right. Well, we'll catch up first. I said yeah, good as gold. We'll send it. To-. I didn't pat him down this time, right? Yeah. 
which is usually against me. I'm usually make them strip, you know, yeah. right, right down to nothing. Meet in the sauna. You know what I mean? Or mm. you know, hop in the swimming pool or something. But anyway, so I said, um, listen, I said, I'll do the deal with you. I said, it's going to cost you, I think at the time it was about 90000 or 100000 And I said, uh, uh, bring the money with you. And I said, but I'm going to give you the hot tip here now, mate. If you try and rob me, if you try and rip me in any way, yeah. I'll kill you on the spot. Yeah, I don't care where you are, mate. Right? And he said, uh, well, he said to make it so, uh, mate, that won't happen. He said, oh, what about we meet at North Sydney right in the middle of the, yeah, you know, the virtually the shopping centre there. He said, no one will, you know, and he said, and, and I said, mate, I wouldn't care where you were. Yeah. You know, if you if you rob me, you're gone. I'll kill you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, because, you know, i got to pay it back then. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, I was going to get a good earn out of it. And I was trying to get, I had an E-type Jag at the time that I'd blown the motor up and I was, I was trying to get out of the, out of the thing, it was going to cost me six and a half thousand for that. Yeah. See? So I was sort of in a desperate mode. So I dropped my guard. So when I threatened him, he was actually wired up. And I found this out later through Rogerson and other detectives that I was to be shot shot on sight. And um, that's exactly what they did. Now, I went into the hotel to meet him. He was in there. It was chock a block. It was lunchtime at North Sydney, Mount Street. And, uh, there was a big building going on across the road. There was plenty of traffic everywhere. So you know, it was pretty hard to spot anyone that was out yeah. of sorts, you yeah. know what I mean? Because the pub was, in those days, they were always jam-packed at lunchtime, yeah. especially there around a working-class area, you know what I mean? The all, the off, all the suits and yeah. that. So I go in there, meet the bloke, and he seemed a little bit off, you know, a bit nervous, but uh, as some people are, you know. So I didn't really cotton on too much about that. And I said, all right, you got the money. He said, yeah. So as we're walking out, we're walking up towards the car. I said, where's your car? He said, the blue one. I said, well, who's, who's the bloke with, it? with you, mate? I told you not to ever bring anybody. He said, he's the bloke who's got the money. I said, I told you not to bring anybody, mate, right? Anyway, I went, oh, fuck it. So I opened up the door. I said, there it is on the floor, mate, right? Go. So I hopped in the car. I turned on my ignition, just turned it on, because I want. If anything was going to go wrong, yeah. I was out of there. Yeah. And next minute, up come the boot of the car, as if he was going in to get the money out of a bag. Yeah. And the other bloke still sitting in the car, big beard he had at the time. And next minute, I could see this bloke scurrying off, and I went, "He's bolted on me!" So yeah. I went, "Bang!" Went to whack the car into gear. Police blocked the road, cars come from everywhere, a truck, and coppers run from doorways out of shops. Like, and next minute, I just knew by the way the, way the cops were standing, there was a lot of cops in the front of the car yeah. with shotguns all aimed at me like that. And then a few here, but there was a big gap here, and I, I turned like that. I went, and as I yeah. did, the shotgun went up on the window like that, and I put my hand over my eyes, and I shot myself back across the seat. Yeah. And the gun went boom, straight right. through the top of my scalp. So I had a Pelletier, Pelletier, <laughs> Pelletier, right? A claret pouring out of my head. Mm. And I already had a gun in the car. Yeah. But they leaned across and went boom and put another one there, and then dragged me out in the street. And yeah. the gun fell out in the street in front of all the, you yeah. know, yeah. But amazing. There, there was not one witness, not one witness. Right. So, which was just incredible being where it was. But um, anyway, so they took me to hospital, the Royal North Shore Hospital. They took out uh, uh, pellets out of my head, me a glass and crap out of my eyes, and um, from the windscreen. And then uh, I was taken out to Long Bay Hospital and put in there. Um, anyway, I I did my time over it. Uh, I I got a sentence, as I told you before. Yeah. I got a seven years with, uh, I think two and a half years or something, and then I I paid. You know, to, which I paid for yeah. to get to get that sentence because they made it a real big thing at the at one stage, and the trial was aborted. Yeah, and uh, the old judge Robinson said to me, 
if you would have been found guilty during the course of this trial, I was going to give you the maximum sentence of 25 years. Right. Right? So that was a big thing and it stayed that just that amount. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and... So w- were you charged with the, the drugs? I was or charged, charged with possession and, shoot, to and, avoid and aimed to avoid apprehension. Okay, so they charged you so with that. So they reckon that, that I pulled true. out a gun, yeah. so they tried to dislodge it out of my arm, yeah. so they said they shot at the steering wheel. Well, it wasn't a pellet on the steering wheel. went right. straight through straight through the window, straight out there and straight out the other side of the window, Yeah, you know. And um, anyway, they got me to the hospital. I got me sentence, did me sentence. But when I got out, I said, I'm going to make a point of this. And I found out where this bloke was, the undercover bloke was. Yeah. So uh, I, I knew that he, he drank over at Surrey Hills. So I went over to Surrey Hills and there he was. So I stood on one side of the bar. He was on the other. He looked around. You see the blood running out of his face. And I went, come over here. And he walked around. And he said, how you going, Abo? All right? He said, all fair in love and war. I said, yeah. No yeah. worries, you did a job. You had your job to do, mate. Right. I'm still here. I'm out. Yeah. He said, well, you got a good result. I said, yeah. Thank you, I did. Yeah. I said, but all over, I got no regrets, mate. All right? Yeah. I, I did that for a reason so I yeah. could keep him sweet. Right. Okay. That was the only reason I did it. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was a complicated. So it was a, you know, that's how, that's how it worked, mate. You know, it was a. Well, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, 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 you know, I mean, uh, that's what organised crime thrives on, mate. You've got to have corruption. If you haven't got corruption, well, you're I, really not playing organised crime. I think that's you can where, be a drug dealer every day of the week. But that, that's where we've got to distinguish with the mm. the chat that we're having here. And I, I hope yeah. what you're giving people is an understanding of yeah. what organised crime is. Like yeah. you're telling these things, and it, it is like a, it's a script from a movie. Yeah. Like it, it's it really is. But yeah. uh, if that's the way the world is, yeah. So. Sure is. Okay. All right. Next one. Um, Mal Spence. Yeah. Uh, tell us a, a, about the uh, circumstances there. So, j- sorry, I put it yeah. put up front. Yeah. This is uh, a police prosecutor. Yep. And uh, you're at the Lord Walsley Hotel and uh, you have got into an altercation. He, he got belted by you and stabbed by you. That's, that's Okay. Correct. That's a starting yeah. point. You tell that's us what, right. what happened. Yeah, he was a police prosecutor. He grew up around Piermont. I uh, knew all the lads, knew all the scallywags. The the thing that started it was this. I'd uh, drunk with him, been at parties with him, and then one day he just t- turned up in the, we well, were at the Captain Cook Hotel down the end of Kent Street in the Rocks near the Lord Nelson Hotel, and he said, um, you going over to uh, Piermont later? I said, I'm heading over to Balmain. I said, I'll go. Why do you want to lift? He said, yeah, can you give us a lift over? I said, yeah, good, let's go. So I drove him over there. We were just having a normal conversation. You know, as I said, I didn't talk in my car about nothing. So we got over to the pub. Got out of the pub and we walked inside. I ordered two beers and I turned around he's pulling his teeth out of his head. I went, well, that doesn't look like a good start of the day. <laughs> I said, mate, put your teeth back in your head. You just made the first mistake of your life taking them out. Yeah. Right? I said, put them back in your mouth, you freaking clown. I said, don't ever, ever accuse me of something like that. Yeah. I said, where would you get that from? He said, I was out at Clovelly. He said, Ned told me. I said, oh, and you'd believe Ned over me. I said, are you kidding? I said, you don't even like the bloke, you know? I said, anyway, I'm going. You have a... Good think about this. Make sure you know what you're talking about next time I see you. So I drove around and I went down. I actually did go down the next day. I thought about it later on. I went down the next day and he was drinking with uh, Kenny McKnight, a detective, and uh, this other one, I forget his name now. And Anyway, I walked in and he said, I'm, I'm a bit busy at the moment. He said, but um, he said, uh, I I haven't really uh, found out too much more about it yet. I saw you you made the worst mistake of your fucking life. That's what you've done. Yeah. I walk out of the place. Anyway, I I, can't, I said, well, you you need to know. I need to know the end. Uh, end. I'm going to confront Smith over it too, right? So I confronted Ned over it, and uh, he said, I don't know if I can tell him a thing like that. You know, uh, I didn't really know what to believe yeah. there. 
right? Because it'd be something he'd say. Yeah. But um, anyway, so I blew the ballot and I thought, well, why would someone write a statement about it? Freaking dirty old Mercedes he had. Like, uh, I mean, he always dressed like a gangster. He had the gold chains on. He had the, yeah. you know, the what's, the slip on shoes. Uh, that's how he turned up to have a drink with us. You yeah. know, like he was one of the boys. Yeah. You know, so if we were all had mercs, he had a merc. You <laughs> know what I mean? So, but anyway, so next minute, I, I just brooded on it. And, I'd had lunch at, uh, at um, uh, 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 up at the Epping Hotel, actually, with a couple of my gang and a couple of jacks that I had on side that I used to sling over the over the robberies, right? And uh, and I made a deal with them that I would never ever give them anything except money. Yeah, you know, they could either like it or lump it. They didn't want to cop it first off. So not, not the information. Uh, yeah, just and not like, information. Yeah. And then they, they came back to me a couple of weeks later yeah. and they nod their head. They said, all right, good yeah. as gold. I said, well, you're going to miss out anyway because I'm going to do them whether you like it or not. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So, and they weren't from that squad, but mm. they they knew people there. You know what I mean? So, anyway, I said, you've only got to be in the area. That's all you've got to do. Yeah. You know, so you take over it. So, next minute... Um, I had a bit of lunch there and they had a bit of wine and stuff. And I, I, like, me drinking wine's like uh, giving whiskey to the Indians. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. I just. Yeah, it doesn't. I, I can't. It doesn't agree with me. Anyway, then I walked out. And as I, as I was going, they'd already gone. And my gang had gone and they'd gone to f- uh, over to some pub at Five Dock for a drink. And uh, I walked out. I think I had one beer in the, in the public bar. And then I was just going to go around it near this house near Ride and stay the night and then go home, which was a friend of mine's home, mate of mine's mother's. So as I did, this bloke stopped me over and I assaulted his son or something, you know, and then this other bloke stuck his head in it. It was a real pain in the butt in the pub. Uh, I wrote about him in the book there. And uh, anyway, he fancied himself, you know, but... I wasn't quite in the mood for him, but I, as I'm, I just thought, no, I'm walking away, I'm going home. So I just walked in the thing. I said, I won't even. Then I got in and I'm still thinking about it, and then he's yelling out from the top of the lane at me, you know. Yeah. Come on, come and have a. I said, well, come down the park. Yeah. Come down the park so down no one can see what I'm going to yeah. do to you. Come on. And he said, I wouldn't go that far for a picnic. Right? That's what he said to me. I said, well, oh, will you? So... So if you come down here, I'm going to cut you a head off. You know what I mean? So I didn't like him anyway, yeah. right? Yeah. So I thought, no, I'm going. So I just put the knife into my pocket instead of in the car, pulled yeah. it out of the car and put it in my pocket, had it in my pocket. I went out, went over to a couple of pubs, ended up at uh, Surrey Hills. Then I said, right, I'm going, we're going home now. So I got three of the gang in the car. Driving along, one wasn't a gang member, but he was sort of got around with a couple of blokes. And I'm driving down Bullwara Road in Aldermore, where the Lord Wolseley Hotel is. It's only a very narrow street, You've got to drive very slowly. I drove down past there, and here's Mal holding court in there with these, you know, telling yarns, and they're all hanging off his every word. So I didn't know who was with him, coppers yeah. or just normal blokes, or there was no crooks there that I knew. Anyway, I walked in and, um, I just tapped him on the shoulder. I said, come outside. I said, we've got uh, something to talk about. And he said, uh, no, I'm not talking shop tonight. I said, you'll be talking more than shop. Get out of here. Mm. I said, follow me. I walked outside. So the silly goose followed me yeah. up to the, the length of the hotel into the back lane. The back lane didn't even have a street light. Yeah. As soon as he got in the b- back lane, I said, now, what do you got to say? Is there a sorry or is there a... Yeah. And he said, I still have more. And bang, I just left talking. He couldn't even get it out of his mouth. Yeah. And I dropped him like a tack, you know. Then as he was getting up, I didn't whack him hard enough to pole axe him. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wanted him to have, have a crack at me. Anyway, he got up and he went into this big sook mode, you know. Oh, you know, mate, I, I was wrong. You know, I was out of school, or, you know. Oh, I said, you weak piece of shit. You know, yeah. I said to myself, you know, I just pulled it straight out of my pocket and I went, whack, straight in his gut. Yeah. 
and then I plunged it straight into his neck here. Right, look, I missed his his uh, main juggler by centimetre. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I would have uh, just cut his head off. Yeah. You know, he would have died on the spot, bled to death. Anyway, next minute. <clears throat> but what he had on was a polo neck jumper. No, I didn't even know. I was pretty pissed. Yeah. I didn't even know if I'd really got him. Yeah. You know what I mean? He had this polo neck jumper on him. And so and when you get stabbed, only unless you see a knife coming at you Don't and even. then you get stabbed, then you'll feel it. But if you're in a fist fight with don't someone, notice it. You, you don't feel it. Mm. You just start to lose a bit of power. And then you go, well, stuff, what's wrong? And you look down, you're covered in claret. Someone's yeah. air-conditioned you, you know? So I went um so next minute, the the ambulance pulled up, coppers, bang, I get put in the cop car, taken down to um, uh, Darlinghurst Police Station. Yeah. He goes in the ambulance. He said, no, I'm sweet. He, I thought, I, m- I mustn't have got him. must have just caught his jumper or something. Yeah. I was open, <laughs> you know. Anyway, I probably wasn't at the time because I was filthy on him, you know, and I thought no one – I don't care, mate. You're not a koala bear. Yeah. You know, protected species. You know, if you want to go around saying that, then you're going to wear the blue. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I know that, you know, so that's a pretty strong thing to say when it comes to a cop and all that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, my principles meant that much to me. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And no one was going to damage it. Yeah. You know, so I went down there and – uh Got down to the police station. I did some business with a copper down there. We got into trouble at King's Cross and got the arse out of the force. I forget his name now. Anyway, give him a few thousand and I walked out on bail charges. He said, he's all right. He's at um, uh, the hospital. Uh, we're just going to charge you with malicious wound. I said, okay, good as gold. So I thought, oh, somehow I'll get through the break here, you know. So uh, uh, next minute, um, you know, uh, that happened. And then uh, I went to the, the prison over it but, um, and got sentenced to eight years with a six. But as the judge said, Justice Badgery Parker, it was more like two criminals meeting in the lame way. They won't expose what uh, uh, what it was they were meeting for. Yeah. And he said uh, for a major criminal like Mr Henry and this bloke to be meeting is quite unusual, wouldn't you say? Yeah. And he said and someone should look into it. That's, so we opened up the floodgates okay. and the can of worms, yeah. you know. Well, well, that is very telling if yeah. that's what the uh, judge, and he's a very experienced judge, oh, very. if that's what the, the yeah. judge, the conclusion he, he's yeah. come to. But um, stabbing someone in the neck, hmm. or well, stabbing someone, I've, I've seen one stab and, and someone dies. You hit yeah. the wrong, wrong spot. Oh, wrong spot and they're dead. If you... If it did, you've said a centimetre, if it went that way, yeah. you've, you've killed a... a Policeman, and if you you killed the policeman, it would have been jail for life for you. Hundred percent. That those circumstances. Hundred percent. Do you think back on that that night? And oh what, what's, yeah, I do, what's, mate. what's your thoughts? Oh well, I just regret it altogether, mate. Yeah. You know, I regret the stupidity of it all. You know, I should have just uh, knocked him down and give him a touch up for you know for for what he said. Yeah. Uh, as I say, the next morning I just went, oh, what the what have I done? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, because someone- and I knew straight away. Yeah. That was the end of me. Yeah. You know what I mean? My, my green light days were gonski. No, no green light. You there. know what I mean? But for someone that's so, yeah, you're planning for your stick ups and the way you, you think about your crimes. Yeah. That almost was a crime of, yeah, you've got to keep keep him in line with breaking the code and mm. you know, throwing stuff at you. But it was almost just angry ego that, uh, yeah, when you, that was when it, you mate. Put, a, put a knife yep. knife in him. Yeah. Just something I brooded on too long. And as I yeah. say, might not just been that, might have been brewed up of things. As I told you once a bit, like as a kid, I'd let things fester in me fester. Yeah. And something might have happened one month, then something else, then something else. And all those things build up in you, and then all of a sudden, bang, was that, you was, lose your plot. Was you that know? a watershed moment for you? Did you think, what am I doing? Oh, like, yeah. I, like I, 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 not, no. not, a, not right at the time. Okay. Uh, not until after when I walked out on bail that yeah. night, then I, you know, I cursed myself Cause, uh, and I rang my wife and that. Yeah, to tell now her. I, I was going to uh, talk was about that because I, I, I know um, your relationship with your your wife is really strong. Yeah, and, very. Uh, yeah, your best friend. Yep. Did you feel like you'd let her down? Oh, straight away, man. 
because I knew I was going to get a big sentence, yeah. you know, and yeah. all my kids and, you know, I yeah. felt like a real heel, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I certainly regretted doing that, I'll tell you. Right. You know, and as I say, I didn't mind that Malcolm before that, you know, where, but, you know, it's yeah. a stupid thing for him to, to have said. Yeah. And he yeah. should have known better. Someone yeah. who walks around the circles doing that. I mean, he was probably on a fishing expedition to find out who it was, but he should have approached it a different way. Yeah. You know, at least, but instead of just straight out accusing me of doing it. Mm. And uh, and then finding out it was one of his well, own kind. I, so, I, I, I suppose there you go. I suppose that's what happens when you're trying to mix two worlds and he he's yeah. playing by his rules. Yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, yeah, not, not condoning it, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So... You've got uh, how long did you do? Six, seven years. I got eight years with uh, six years on the bottom. Is that the last time you were uh, did time? That's right. Yep. Yeah, and yeah. it was just like then when they tried to kill me. Just on the last, a squad was sent in to knock me. You know. Yeah. That we've already talked about. Uh, uh, and there, there's other attempts of uh, on your life. We oh, won't, mate, we won't cover them. But well, I had fourteen when I wrote the book, but yeah. there's been six more after that. Uh, you know, just just a quick one. Like uh, I had uh, a big ethnic gang come and get me, yeah. and and I'm not telling you a lie when I say ten of them turned up. Yeah, and I knew who they were. I rung them. Yeah, and I even had words with the main bloke in the the office. They yeah. owned a business, and I uh, I got up him and I said, "Do I ever see you, your cars?" Which is this number plate and that number plate. Yeah. I'm very good on number plates. Yeah, and numbers, you know. Uh, I ever see them around my house again, yep. I'll be coming to see you. Mm. So, he, you know, he denied all the accusations and, of course, but then me, me little daughter was with me and I had a, I had a big Mercedes Benz that was uh, bulletproof. The yep. windows were bulletproof. And my wife was out in it that night. And it's here Thursday night. Well, Thursday night I was usually at Balmain or yeah. somewhere having a beer with the boys or, right? So this Thursday night I was at home. There's just me and my daughter. Now, uh, I walked outside and I was just standing on the side of the road and this big bloke ran across the road to, like, to get himself positioned in the bush beside me driveway. Yeah. And I'm standing there in the dark. There's no street light out the front. This is in West Pennant Hills, right? Yeah. And uh, when he saw me, he freaked and just turned around, run down the street and started punching the branches of these trees. I said, that'll do you no good, mate, right? So I went, whoosh, back in the house. And I got upstairs and I had a big bay window and I'm watching up there and I'm I said to my daughter, can you do me a favour? Just get the little your little car because they don't know yeah. it. Just whoop it out the driveway, drive down that way and up that way and see if you can see these number plates. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Bang, back she comes. Dad, she said, there's like a dozen of them there. Yeah. Right? She was 18. Yeah. Right? And I said, right, well, listen, this is what you're going to do. Just go downstairs and get me a cricket bag. I've got a cricket bag. She said, cricket bag? I said, yeah, big white one with brown handles. <laughs> so she goes down, brings them up. I open it up. I've got about 15 guns in it. I laid them all out in the bed. I said, you sit down there in the corner? Yeah. Because these people mean business. Now, these blokes had shaved heads. They had friggin' Ugg boots on so they could sneak around over the grass yeah. and the, right? No, they are going to wait till I was right in that window where I usually sit so I can watch all the time and sneak me. Now, prior to that, they'd already had a few goes. Yeah. Right? And I kept on picking them up, trapping them working them out, and they knew that I kept on getting onto them. So I, I kept on stopping them all the time. Then they must have said, we've had enough. We've got to go. We're so doing they, him. they turned up with a heap of them, Yeah. right? And they're coming past the house, and, and I saw it, right, and I said to my daughter, now if they come into the place, I'm going to have to shoot them on the grass, Yeah. right? As soon as they enter my yard, they're going down, right? So I said, don't you move, don't make a noise, just stay there, Yeah. right? So I'm there waiting, got this cannon, yeah. right? And next minute they're all, all gather. They're, they've come, a light turned into someone's driveway and sprung one of them and they run out from behind. I went, yeah. oh, there's another one there, right? So next minute they're getting the shits. So what I did, they all gather yeah. up on this corner 
So I just, and you know how noise travels of a night, I just opened up the bay window like that and I said, Bob, wait till they come in the front yard. Kevin, the same, mate. <laughs> wait till in the front yard, then let go. You just got yourself some That's what backup. I did and <laughs> off they went. Yeah. Never seen them again. That was uh, Thursday before Good Friday, 2004. Right. I remember the day like that. At, at, is it the pressure of living this lifestyle? Is it tiring? Like, well, it got where tiring then. Yeah. I started yeah. to get tired of it then. Yeah. I thought, you know, this is a joke. You know, I haven't told on anybody. I haven't robbed anybody. So how? No, how, like robbed them, yeah. other crooks or anything, right? So, you know, and I'm copping all this how off d- this little greasy in, informer who worked for the Crime Commission. How do you get yourself out of this life then? I just walked away, mate. Yeah. You know, I, I, I moved up the coast. Yeah. And then I, I kept coming back and I worked with Stan Smith, who they all thought had preached and gone to God. Right. Right. So still working with him yeah. until he passed in 2010. Right. And me, him, and a couple other blokes. Yeah. And uh, uh, we we're still operating, still learning to quit. Yeah. And um, and then when he died, I just said, ah, oh, I'm over it all. Yeah. And I just pulled the plug. I went into commodity broking. Yeah. Started doing commodity broking with a mate of mine, Matty Thomas, in uh, Melbourne. Yeah. Uh, who was actually involved with uh, uh, McGatto with the um, Elite Cranes. Yeah. And uh, in the end, a little bit of a falling out there. And um, But uh, me and Matty started working together doing all these commodity deals like uh, jet fuel. And yeah. I got onto this mob in Sydney who said they could move it all. And, and then we're doing all these deals with these people. And we had a bloke who would work with, uh, not ASIO, uh, uh, Interpol. Yeah. And uh, he, he had connections to him. So when we were dealing with people, especially with gold and stuff like yeah. that, well, a lot of Russians get involved. Yeah. Okay, so you've got to work out who's who with them. So we used to get them checked out once we knew what name they were under and run it past the Interpol people. Yeah. And they'd just go, no, 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 no. Yeah, stay away. No good. Russian mob. You know, yeah, the mob, you know, just yep. bang. So so we keep away from, uh, you know, got into jet fuel, coal. Uh, and, and look, that just became a nightmare. Like it was 3 o'clock in the morning, up in the morning, 4 o'clock. Right. You know, having all these three-way calls with people in Africa and yeah. here. And then we finally get two blokes into a room one day for this gold bullion. Yeah. Right. It took months and months to plan together. We're the brokers in the middle. That's what our job. Yeah. You know, to bring them together. So one owns the gold, one's the buyer. Yep. Bring them into the room and they go, I don't work with this bloke. <laughs> I said, what for? What's wrong with you, man? And he said, we don't work with together. I don't like him. Yeah, don't trust him. <laughs> I see that. Banged up was the end of it. Yeah. I went, well, I, I remember I was out on the Hawkesbury River yeah. with my family and I'm waiting on this call to come through. To, I think the deal's been uh, done. Because uh, uh, that morning I got one. It's yeah. going through. So it's ready to go. Yeah. And I'm fucking, re- whoa, she's a big earn here. Yeah. We're talking 60 mil yeah. between the lot of us. Yeah. Right? Big earn, you know? And bang, fell over like that. Right. Just so, and I went, oh, mate, I'm over this we, shit. Were you, were you ever tempted to go back when it when it became hard like that? Do you just oh, yeah. S- stuff it? Yeah, yeah, many times. Name? Yeah, many times I wanted to go back. And then I just thought, oh, you know, who's around? Yeah. You know, who's around that I could build up and put into a team and trust? And, yeah. Uh, and I just went, nah. You know, I did a little few things on my own. and. Yeah couple of little things for a little while and then I just I just said, no, nah, that's enough, you know. And I wrote my book and then I yeah, I did some speaking tours. Yeah. I've done stuff like that, which I'm gonna start again. Yeah. And I'm trying to add them into my ones where, you know, we well, just got twenty people at dinner and do things like that. that that's and, not a bad idea. Like just know. like an intimate yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they all pay something per head and you know, sit down over a meal, have a few drinks, I, I ask you a few questions, yeah. you know. No, that that sounds like it sounds like a good yeah, idea. I've done them before, so yeah. that they're they're good, you know. Better than talking to, you know, two hundred in the crowd, you know what I mean? Yeah. I and I think people are just so fascinated with true crime. Yeah. And yeah, the gangster lifestyle. Otherwise yeah. they wouldn't be making the T V shows about it. They wouldn't be making oh, the documentaries right, and movies. Oh, there's no or, doubt or about this fascination. Whatever. Yeah. You know, I mean it even amazes me still after all these years about the error of us. Yeah. But 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 ours is like 
history, it's folklore, like from oh. Lanny's gang to ours to Mickles. Yeah. And, you know, even that Barry McCann gang, which wasn't really a gang anyway. But they were, you know, always mentioned as some organised gang. They yeah. weren't. Um, but uh, they ended up all nearly all rats. But it was, it is like folklore. But, oh, uh, yeah. And, 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 and but, it's history, you know. It's really part of history. It's a, the, and da- never be repeated again. I don't think it'll ever come back in my lifetime, that. The dark, dark nah, side of Sydney. Nah. I, look, I'm sure there's blokes that have still got cop suite, and I know blokes that have, mm. but they're all working for the Crime Commission. Yeah. Oh, I know who they are. My mates know who they are. We yeah. know where they live. Yeah. You know what I mean? They do their thing. I couldn't be bothered with them anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? What they do is their business and, um, you know, the, you know, that's how the Crime Commission, uh, they, they work good. Yeah. They know what they're doing and they even work with blokes that were murdering people. Yeah. So you know what I mean? And that's not talking out of school. That's when the bloke was shot at the garage. Yeah. He was working for him as a as a major informer and he was running around supplying everyone the gear and uh, at the same time shooting people and murdering them and he yeah. was being protected. So, you know, it's... Tell yeah. me the common sense in that. So, <laughs> so, you know, those blokes are still out there getting that sort of go yeah. and driving the big flash cars and never getting arrested or they or they get raided every now and then, Yeah, you know, as part of the ploy. So they look bad, you know, and they're part of the deal, but they just manage to but, scrape through all the time. I, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what it is That's about. Up. I don't know what it is about the era that uh, you guys were uh, yeah. running running as wild as you were, but I, I don't think it'll be repeated. No. And they're just, um, yeah. Um, a, another quick one, the the, the Harry M. Miller. Harry M. Miller. Inside. Yeah, oh, geez, I protected him a couple of times, Harry, but. So how did that play out? Well, he actually first came into prison. He was like the big entrepreneur around town. Yeah, he uh, had a Put on reputation. all the shows yeah. and, uh, you know, hair and all those sort of productions. And uh, the story was that he was umping some politician's wife, a very high-profile premier at the time, and uh, and uh, that the uh, they turned on him over it, and then they they charged him with uh, ticket tech fraud or something. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he went to prison for he got a couple of years or something. And uh, when he was in there, he was. I remember the first night he came in, he came into my wing, and I had to look after him and get him up in his cell, and I just told him a few of the rules, you know. Yeah. As he got there, and I said, "If you see anything happening, if you see any fight, to see anything, just mind your own fucking business. Keep walking. Don't stop and look. Just yeah. turn your head. Keep walking. See someone sticking a noodle in their arm. The same thing. Yeah, you understand. Anyway, so next minute he he started getting out, and I just said to him, "You're feeling uncomfortable where I am. You just come and walk with me in the yard. Yeah. That's all you got to do. Walk with me, and you'll be all right." Yeah. And um, and that's what he did. So I looked after him there. And then when we got up to Cessna, he started to give me a little bit of money. Yeah. Right? So and what, what, what used to happen, he used to go to play squash or something outside and none of the boys would give him a go. Yeah. So he'd sit out there all the time while he's – because he was a C-classification prisoner, which meant he could go outside the jail. Yeah, yeah. They'd take him down those squash courts. They wouldn't give him a game. So when they'd come back, I'd have to have a talk to him. Mm. You know, and that would change the ball game and the way you go again and yeah. be some more money in my pocket. So, yeah. so maybe it was happening for a reason. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Understand. A racket inside. But, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but, I, but I did uh, look after him yeah. and then uh, drag queens run into his cell one night. Yeah. And uh, uh, we were going to get, they were, they were going to try and get pictures of him. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. In there. And uh, they had this old cardboard bloody. Uh, Camera that were going around, yeah. they're only cheap, and they yeah. snuck him in on a visit and tried to get pictures of him in there. Anyway, he locked himself in the room, and right. I pissed him off, you know, got him yeah. out of the wing and just kicked him up the ass and right. sent him on their way. They had the big operation, they had the and big so that was to the... compromise him and then probably blackmail him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. give him the blackmail job. Okay, look what he's doing in here. Jesus, either give us some yeah. money or. Yeah, you know, so there was all sorts of tricks going on everywhere. Hey, one other thing, I, I, oh, a thousand other things I want to talk about. Yeah. But one other thing we'll cover is Sally Ann Huckstep. Yep. What's your your, your take on that and knowledge on well, that? My, well, my take is, is I know that Ned was involved again. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to women, he always seemed to be involved, but he wasn't the one who finished her off. Um, but prior to that happening, yeah, 
he called me up one day, just out of the blue, and he said, come and see me. I went over to see him, mm. and when I got there, I waited for about 10 minutes before I got out of the car, and I just had a bit of a surveil of the area, make sure there wasn't a setup. Then I walked over, tapped on the window, and said, get out of the car. I'm not going to hop in the car. I don't talk in cars. So he got out of the car. I said, what are you doing? He said, uh, just keep your eye on the gate there. So I'm, I'm near Centennial Park. Yeah. So down comes Sally Ann. I knew Sally Ann yeah. from up the cross. Sally Ann walked past, walked into the thing, and he said, he's in there. I went, I don't care who he's moving. She's mm. moving. I yeah. don't care, mate. Right? Well, what's going on? Yeah. He said, going to put her off. I said, well, fucking see you later, mate. I'm not involved in that. Yeah. See you later. What do you, what do you have to tell me that for? Mm. So I hopped in the car and I pissed off. Anyway, the following week, she walked down there and he put her in the sleeper roll. That's what he used to do. We used to put people mm. in the sleeper roll, get behind them, yeah. just squeeze the muscle. He had big arms at the top. Yeah. He'd just squeeze the muscle. She'd go out. Well, she turned around scratching me in the face. Yeah. And unfortunately, they couldn't... Um, well, fortunately for him, mm. they couldn't. They preserved a, a, a fingernail yeah. because she was fingernail uh, because she was uh, Jewish. Yeah, and they they preserve them, so they took them down for DNA samples, but they matched about sixty six thousand people. Right. So, okay. so we got through the break on that, but the next day he went and told the cops that he did it. Yeah, but someone else. He sat on the bank. I went and saw the psycho lady one day. Psycho, yeah. psycho. Not not a psycho lady, a, a, a psychic so, yeah. at Port Macquarie, and she was unbelievable as hell. Yeah. And I went up there, and she said, "There's a girl sitting on the end of this bed. She's dripping wet." And I went, "Right." And he said, "She said you can help her by telling the truth." And I went, "I don't know what you're talking about, mm. love. Right? Yeah. I just right." And then she said, "Um." Uh, what, what what else was it? She said, your mate didn't even, you had a mate called Eddie or someone. Eddie. Eddie. Eddie she kept calling yeah. him, right? I said, okay. And she said, he didn't kill her. He sat on the bank. She even got in the position that he was standing yeah. and put his elbows down on his hand and he watched while the other person that was there took her out in the middle of the pond and stood on the chest and drowned her. Right. Oh, that 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 was what he did, mm. you know. He got off on that mate. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, he was a. He had some strange ways about him. The bloke had charisma. He yeah. good style. He could have been anything. And he's, but he had this f- filthy, treacherous, treacherous nature. You know. There, there was a, a, a nastiness, and yeah, I, I suppose, and this is the relationship you had with Nettie. Yeah. Like. You were speaking to him after he tried to kill uh, kill you. Yeah. You he's speaking to you after you tried to kill yeah. him. Um, is that just uh, like uh, what I'm seeing? Is that's just keeping it, uh, uh, part of it was to all always be seen that everything was all right. Yeah, yeah. So in case it. anything happened, oh, I saw him the other day. We we're having a chat. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean. People had seen us. Yeah. Or you know, shook his hand walking out the door. Yeah. Know what I mean. Yeah. Three days later, someone might try to shoot him. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. That, that was the was that, was strategy the, that was the strategy it behind it all. So how's life for you outside of uh, the world that you lived in? You enjoying life now? Well, uh, first off, I wasn't. You know, yeah. I, I actually went through a little bit of a anxiety shit. Yeah, you know, when I left the life, uh, and yeah, it was like like a any professional bloke who gets into something and then they just pull out of it. You know, I, 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 and then I started getting bored. You know, and, yeah. And then I, uh, I just uh, started to do my meditation. Went on good walks. Tried to get myself involved in different little businesses. Yeah. Opened up a theatre in Newcastle. Yeah. Uh, uh, the King's Theatre restaurant had dinner shows on there and stuff like that. And then, as soon as I was putting on for sixty nine bucks a a night, yeah, uh, the club down the road put them on for thirty nine. <laughs> Yeah. So then they wrote a big story up about me in the Newcastle Herald. Yeah. And that was the end of the business. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, everything I tried, they kept on sticking it Make, up me. Making it hard. You know, and virtually pushing me back into the corner. I didn't want to go back yeah. into. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, I haven't. 
you know. Yeah. I've, I've got through the break. I've survived. Uh, uh, you know, I, I went a bit on the punt every now and then. Yeah. and no, That helps with a few bills if they come in and we have a good time on it. And, and family? And family's all, all with me. I've got yeah. a daughter who's over there who's a professional singer. She, um, they were living in Singapore for a while and they came back over yeah. here and I couldn't get back because of COVID. They've oh, been right. there living in my house for two and a half years <laughs> right. with their three children. I thought you looked tired. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and my other daughter just lives down the road. Yeah. And um, my son uh, uh, actually went to prison for a little while. Right. And uh, actually got a little bit of a drug habit. Yeah. And then he got out and he said, that ain't for me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he went straight back into the uh, mines and he's yeah. been uh, working in the mines underground. Yeah, and uh, he's going really well, and just about to have a baby, and uh, you know, he uh, he was in the army, and uh, yeah, you know, no, he was a good kid. He, he, you know, he kept out of trouble most of his life, and then uh, just after the the army put on a little bit of bullshit about him one day when he, he uh, said he had pseudo ephedra yeah. in his body, and they were for t- fluent yeah. cold tablets, and uh, I got other doctors to prove that, and uh, so anyway, he ended up uh, losing the. Plot a bit after that, yeah, yeah. and uh, went into a bit of depression, and um, uh, fucking got on the fucking silly gear and uh, the ice, yeah, and uh, I had to pull his head in a few times, you know, and uh, well, you, you certainly could give him some advice on the oh yeah, he was heading, you know, yeah, and and then I, you know, I go and see him, and and then but uh, most of the time he spent in Segram because he was he was part of a bike club in Western Australia, yeah. The rebels, and then he, uh, you know, and they didn't get into any much trouble over there. They yeah. just run around, did their own thing, and um, you know, there's a little bit of havoc going on over there now. After they killed his boss over there, but um, ever since uh, that, then he he left them and just said, uh, "No, I'm just out, and I'm just." Um, he's just uh, changed his whole life around, yeah, and yeah. he's got a little kid on the way in due in April, yeah. and. Uh, He's going really well, so I'm very proud of him. Well, yeah. it's uh, yeah. If I, there's a couple of things. If you look back, uh, yeah, twenty years ago, thirty years ago, yeah. and thought you were going to be sitting here speaking yeah. to an ex-homicide detective, talking about your family, yeah, um, you've survived. Yeah, and I'll I'll reference your book again. The, just pass yeah. it over here. Yeah, like yeah. The, the last man standing, uncut. The Graham Henry story. Um, how do people get it? Uh, mate, uh, there'll be a website go up in in next few days or a week. Yeah, and uh, all they've got to do is uh, send a bag in in there with a, a, a I can put put that in returned yeah. in post, and uh, uh, I, I've already got you know plenty of copies of it. Yeah, and I'll just send it straight to them, okay. so they don't have to go because a lot of people kept getting in touch with me saying, "Where can I get your book? It's up on bloody." You know, my old one uh, up on the tre- treacherous life, yeah, yeah, which is mostly the same book because yeah. I had so much demand for it, yeah. And then, um, uh, so I added a little bit to it, and then uh, uh, so it's part of that book and part of the little bit that I put in the back there, yeah. Well, um, uh, it's a, uh, <laughs> it sells for thirty five bucks, and uh, you know. Well, I, a four-hour podcast. I've got to earn a living somehow. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're earning a yeah. living, living this way. That's right. And uh, But for a four-hour podcast, and it's the longest podcast we've done, I still can't do it justice, all the de- all the details and, and getting, you know, I'm sitting down talking with the link to a past world. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, if you want the details, a full detail, it's in the book. It's a good read, yeah. and uh, it goes in a lot more depth than what we cover on, on in the podcast. But uh, yeah. yeah, I I don't know what to say. I'm sort of see, seeing here thinking, well, Jesus, what what a life! Yeah, and uh, certainly been a life. Man. I'm looking at you and thinking you shouldn't be here. You yeah. should be. You should be dead. You should be in jail. <laughs> be plenty you should be like to think I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, there must have be been a, a reason that uh, oh, I you, you so, stayed mate. there. Right? Yeah, yeah. For for sure and certain, you know. And someone's looked after me. I think they made that movie about Rocky Grass. I know somebody up there likes me. Yeah, so, maybe uh, he likes me. <laughs> maybe something. You've done something right. Do you have uh, Do you have regrets about the violence or all that? Is there anything that uh, you look no, back? Uh, at? No, because I didn't use it against the people in public. 
Yeah. You know, I might have had a fight in public. Yeah. But um, uh, but uh, they knew the rules. They lived by the rules. Yeah. They knew the rules and, you know, they so, were going to shoot me or stab me. I, I got in first. So this is a, a – I, I just want – people to try to understand yeah. this, this is the, the code that we talk about yeah. the, the, in yep. your world yep. and I think if if people want to understand it, it doesn't surprise me sitting down speaking to someone like you I've, I've spoken to people during yeah. my, my career yeah. and I understand that's the code now look, yeah. you mightn't respect the code but you can respect the people for uh, sticking to their own code. Oh yeah, so. you got to have your, 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 you know, everyone's principles are different. Yeah, yeah. Mine are, I just don't tell or rat on your, your friends or your enemies. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, if a f- couple of verbals, yeah, you can verbal them back. That's yeah. allowed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, but, you know, I'm not ever going to sink anyone and uh, I'm not going to run in their house and well, I, I can't do an re- invasion or spray up their house. I can't remember if it's a crook or a cop that uh, said, uh, yeah, court's about uh, you get in the witness box and you try and tell... The, you, you tell the best lie and I'll tell, tell the lie and I'll tell the better lie. That's yeah, right, yeah, exactly. But, uh, May the best yeah. lie win. Strange uh, strange times. Yes, La- last, last word. Yes. This life that you've lived, yeah. you wouldn't recommend it for anyone? I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. Yeah. You know? I mean, uh, the only reason I, 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 as I said, I was in it, I, I was sort of, I'd been doing it all my life. You yeah. know, and I, and, and I, I just headed that way. Maybe it was me upbringing uh, that forced me that way to live on the streets. To you know, which I did. I lived in gutters. I lived in friggin' drains, uh, toilet blocks. You know, um, uh, just to keep keep away from it all. But mm. uh, in the end, I have to go go back and protect my mother and all that. And I guess it just it made me the bloke I am today. I mean, I, I've been married forty eight years. I, I'd never raised my hand to my wife. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, I wouldn't dare do it. Yeah, you know, I go and put a bullet in my own head before I did that. Yeah, you know, um, and uh, I think I've hit my children about three times up the ass, smack them on yeah. the ass, yeah, <laughs> three times yeah. in their life. You know what I mean? I just wouldn't do it. Yeah, you know. So, uh, uh, mate, I wouldn't recommend this life to anybody. Mate, uh, just move on and just. You know, it's uh, it's just a world of snakes and rats and yeah. You know, the odd good bloke here and there. Yeah, and I say the odd good bloke. Yeah, you know, well, they're hard to find, mate. Yeah, well, thanks for coming on and being so uh, no worries, open mate. with us and that. And uh, I've really enjoyed it. It's a fascinating story. So, Graham, all the best for the future. Thanks, and, mate. I uh, appreciate it. Yeah, I hope things fall into place for you. Yeah. And it's it's good seeing you earn an honest dollar. That's and, right, uh, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, all the best. Yeah, thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Cheers, mate.